Okay, so tell me, in what way do you strive to have an impact in the debate of climate change through your movies? Well, I I tend to I try to um, if it, if it's like a drama that's related to climate change in a sense, I try to have that um, value at stake that connected to climate change. For instance, trust is a moral va value at stake. That's really important to me and. Well, I, I'm, I'm right now. I'm developing five or six. I don't. It depends on how it goes, but maybe five or six feature films on climate change, and all of them are connected to trust. That's the most important issue or value at stake in those movies. There might be other values at stake uh, at the same time, like power structures and whatnot, uh, intersectionality, and. Uh, you know, it, um, but trust is the one who goes through all of them, who pierces through every fiction or drama that I've been working with. And what do you mean when you say trust? Trust in what way? Between people or between um, generations um, and between like uh, institutions and people, like trust on all levels. So, and trusting yourself in you. So there's like four levels on conflict. It's like person versus person, uh, person versus him or herself, person versus society or person versus nature. So it goes through, it goes on all those levels, I think, trust. If uh, it doesn't have to be all of them for at once, but it could be nice to achieve that sometimes. <laughs> but you have five scripts on the way. Yeah, more actually, but there might there there are like five or six that are related to climate change. It's and 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 I'm well. I started saying this thing about climate change being antagonist with like a thousand heads. It's like a monster. If you cut one head off, another one just grows up, and so it's like we need more or less an anthology with a thousand stories or more on different le levels um, and a different like all sorry half the tom then fan of that eh vad sa du vad sa du Well, basically, I have yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I have eller vill du ställa en fråga? Nej, du kan köra det på. Well, yeah, I have I've got um, five or six um, fiction feature scripts related to climate change in a sense. Um, it could be in the present or in the future or one of them is set in 94. And it's not really about climate change, but it's related to it because it's related to the agriculture and uh, personal like values. Um, and uh, uh, like a toxic masculinity, for instance, or pr uh, like pride and stuff like that. Also, more values at stake. Um, so I, I, I've been saying that climate change is uh, like an enemy or an antagonist with a thousand heads. If you cut one off, another one grows out. So I'm thinking that you need, we need um, basically a thousand stories or more, like an anthology of stories on different kind of levels. And I'm trying to provide <laughs> my part, my share of that, which is those five or six. It depends on how it goes. We, uh, I mean, some of them are just in like the like uh, uh, first stage, like I'm writing a synopsis or a treatment right now for a couple of them. And uh, another one is uh, uh, two of them actually are we trying to finance right now to shoot next year. And I'm also, I'm, I mean, I'm directing a few of them, but I'm not directing all of them. So it might go uh, either way and we'll see. Where does it come from, your interest in climate change? Well, I mean...
It's a really good question because I picked up on it so early and none of my friends did, basically. And I've been like this obnoxious person for a decade and a half now, something like that. So, but I, I, I know that my first, like the first ignition was uh, when I watched a BBC documentary. Uh, uh, it was from the early, uh, beginning of the 2000s, somewhere around there. And um, yeah, that sort of like made a huge impact on me and I started talking about it and I started reacting to things uh, like being stuck in traffic and stuff like that. Also s started telling people that were uh, like sleeping in the car with the engine going and stuff like that in the US. When I was living in the US, I was like really obnoxious probably but I used, I started doing that in like in 2001 like telling cops to turn their engines off and that was almost like <laughs> uh, sent out of the country at one point uh, by an immigration officer uh, but so this started there but then it sort of my interest was at this level for a while and then um, I saw Mark uh, Linus uh, live. Uh, he wrote that book, um, Six Degrees Living, uh, Six Degrees Living in a in a Hotter World. I think. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, but it that. Okay, then, but that was on that level. Uh, but it sort of kicked in even worse when I saw Mark Linus, who's uh, author of Six Degrees, in two thousand and I think I saw him in two thousand and seven or something like that. Uh, he had a seminar in Gothenburg where I used to live at the at the time being and that scared the shit out of me so I read that book a couple of years later it took me a couple of years to actually uh, before uh, before that I was too scared to read it basically and after that I had this terrible climate anxiety which is starting to descend, uh, I guess, uh, in a way, because the world is reacting to it more now. Uh, but I had lots of time and uh, lots of thoughts about climate change and what it does to people and what it did to me and what's it, what it's doing to climate uh, scientists at the moment. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess that's, that's it for me. Uh. How does it differ, you think, uh, communicating this issue through art rather than science or news? Well, you have, you have the opportunity to speak on a personal level and communicate through... Like, it doesn't have to be on topic, uh, climate change specifically. It could be related, to, in a sense, uh, and then you could, like, make a difference even though it's not nobody even though no one says climate change in a movie you could like do really good things uh because maybe your movie is related and it addresses things like pride or trust or toxic masculinity or whatever or uh, i think interstellar is doing a great job that movie uh telling the story of climate change even though they almost call it climate change in that one but you have the you have the opportunity to put it on a personal level and make it that people think that they are climate change in a sense I am climate change you are climate change that's what I'm trying to do right now in my the, the stuff that I'm writing in my movies uh, to uh, connect the dots and make it about me and my personal shortcomings and whatnot and uh, the conflicts in my life and try to connect that on our on that personal level to climate change um, well you have that opportunity whereas scientists really doesn't they don't have that uh, they don't deal with apathy or power structures in that sense uh, or connections between people in that sense. So I think that's really, really, really important in order to address, because it's about change. And people don't want to change <laughs> if they don't have to. So 
uh, I think. But talking about change, yeah. you also want to make an impact on the whole movie industry. Yeah. In what way? Um, well, I really don't understand the question, sorry. Well, I'm thinking about... Uh, <laughs> the uh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, I got you, okay. Mm. Uh, okay, I can take the question again. Um, you're also trying to make an impact on the whole uh, movie industry. Right, uh, right. Can you tell us more about that? Well, yeah, that's a friend of mine he, who started that. Uh, um, it's a calling for uh, to make the Swedish film industry more sustainable and more environmentally friendly. And also, I mean, it's like saying it's kind of obvious that it's not environmentally friendly to to shoot productions in in middle Europe or in South Africa for that matter is supposed to take place in Sweden <laughs> it's it's uh, it's uh, I'm writing a satire on that right now so I can't really say that much about it but it's like stuff that satire is made up of made of um, to me um, but I also understand the economic situation for Swedish producers and if it's I mean if it's profitable to shoot somewhere else why should they like shoot it in Sweden if they don't have to if they could do just a, as good a job shooting in Slovenia or Lithuania uh, so it's 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 a terrible situation actually where people fly all the time in order to shoot something supposed to take place in Sweden but they fly to another country in order to do that because it's more profitable they have a tax rebate uh, there what have their responses been so far has been uh, well none that I know of but I think that um, I mean the response within the film industry between people that I know has been really really good but I mean I live in this bubble where people are into this and uh, I know that it made an impact on for instance the culture um, culture department the cultural department in Sweden um, but I mean nothing official not, there's no like it's it's way too soon I guess but yeah it's hard to say actually why what kind of way <laughs> yeah. but finally uh, you've been part of this big sorry sorry I think that actually that helped that uh, that um, thing I think it helped providing for another reason why Sweden should uh, get that same tax rebates so that production don't have to go abroad uh, um, to the extent that they're doing right now so it's another reason for tax rebates in, in Sweden because we don't have that right now and it's, it's, an, it's a topic that's been on and off for a couple of years uh, so that might help actually as a new uh, yeah, reason uh, you've been part of this uh, big uh, climate conference today. Yeah. Uh, how would you summarize today? I mean, it's been interesting. We've uh, heard. I've been. Uh, I've heard a couple of talks, and I've also been hanging out and uh, discussing with the other people from the arts world who's here. And uh, so it's been very. I mean, it might not be like useful in that sense that you uh, use it um, like you have that linear this I'm going to use in that way but it's more like every time you meet people doing the same thing it's like uh, it's uh, I mean all these people they have climate grief basically so it's kind of it's a nice way to meet people and to see that things are happening and get a little bit of hope basically so I think that's the, that's the main thing.